Hello and welcome to this video. So I'm starting in settings.json because I just want to show you I've made a, a little change. I've added on a couple more currency pairs just so that when we get the bot up and running we get a bigger likelihood of actually getting a trade detected. And I've changed the MAs to 2 and 8 and obviously that's a ridiculous crossing strategy. But again it's just designed to try and get trades on the board as fast as possible so I don't need to wait for hours for one to appear. Then I'm going to move into defs.py and I've added at the bottom of defs.py three new uh, constants. Well, they're technically variables, but we'll call them constants. One is called buy, one sell, and one none. And we've got a one, a minus one, and a zero there as the definitions. And we'll be using those later on just to make things a little bit easier to read. I think we did something similar actually in the backtesting section. Then you'll notice that we have a new file called technicals.py and it's inside here that we're going to be working in this video. Now I'm going to warn you in advance, I'm going to do this mostly using copy and paste because I don't want the video to run too long. It's nothing we really haven't seen before. I don't want things to really take a long, long time. And the code is on GitHub, so you can always open the file and copy and paste bits in yourself anyway. So why have we got this file here? Well, if I go inside bot.py, remember that in the process pairs, we print out to the screen, or sorry, we log to our log file whenever we're ready to trade. So we have a new candle for a given pair. And what we need to do then here is instead of just logging a message is actually start calculating whether there's been a moving average cross or not and things like that. So that means we're going to be putting quite a bit of logic in here. Now one way of doing that would be just to write the functions inside the trading bot. But I think it's better that we make a class outside the trading bot and use that to actually make all of the technical analysis. And one reason for that would be you can then chop and change and switch things in and out inside your bot in a much easier way. And the other one is if we write it in a certain form, so independent of the bot, you, we can then debug and test the functionality a little bit easier. Now the design we're going to be using isn't the most optimum design pattern, let's say. I've gone really for clarity over anything else as usual, but it should give you an idea of one, one way of going uh, about this. And there are many, many ways. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to import uh, pandas as PD and not import it on line 5 but on line 1 and then we're going to import this by cell and none from defs. Next thing I'd like to do then is create our new class and we'll call that class technicals. And that class is going to take in uh, a number of different uh, parameters when it's initialized. So we'll initialize the class, then we have the self. It's going to take in a reference to some settings and those will be the settings from the bot. It's going to take in an API instance. It's going to take in a pair that it's supposed to be looking at, a granularity. And then we're going to have a log with the default uh, argument of none. And you'll see why we've got the default argument of none in a minute. Now, all of these settings here and actually the log will come from the bot. So you might ask yourself the question, well, why don't we just pass the, uh, the bot into our technicals instance? Well, later on when you build your code out and you maybe go for more complicated things than we're doing, you might want to test the functionality of uh, the different functions inside this class and it'll be a bit of a pain to create an instance of a bot each time and set the bot up and then running and looping and then only to test these functions. Easier would be as if we had the various parts that we need for the class and then we can test them without needing to start a bot. So that's why I've done that like this. So coming on to the log, what we're going to do is we're going to write uh, a function that's almost exactly the same as the one we've actually got inside our bot. That is a log message. But there's one little trick in that. We're just going to ask the question, if self.log is not none, then we'll log the message. So as a little explainer of what's going on here is, again, if we were testing this technicals class independently of the bot, so in a minute we're going to write a fetch candles function and we wanted to test that just using if name is main down the bottom of this file here, then maybe we don't want to create a log. So therefore we could just not send anything into the initialization of the technicals class and log is then none and then we don't log anything. In the case of when our bot uses it, however, we will pass a reference to the log of the bot. And that means anything we log inside this class will be written to the log of the bot because log will not be none. So it's just there for a little bit of convenience. There are other ways of doing that. It's a little bit of a hack, but uh, it'll do for now. So I'm going to flesh out now some of the functions that we're going to need inside this class. So we're going to need one called uh, fetch candles. So we'll take in how many candles, so the row count. And importantly, we're also going to take in the candle time of the most recently completed candle that we expect. We're going to make another function, this time called process candles. And this is something you'll have seen in terms of code, very similar in the backtesting part of the course where we actually process and look for crosses and things like that. We'll do that inside this process candles. And then last but not least, we'll have one more function. And this is the function that the bot will use. And that is, please give me a decision to trade. And as a parameter, that takes in the time of the candle that we're expecting to be the most recently 
completed candle. So let's start then with our code inside this uh, get trade decision here. So the first thing we need to do is understand how many candles we want to get. Now if you remember when we're looking at the moving averages, I think our biggest moving average cross is eight. In, so we want at least eight rows, but remember we always chop one off when we get them from the API because we don't want the incomplete candle. So actually we'll need nine rows. And what we'll actually do because of the shifting in NAs is add another one on. So the number of rows that we need are going to be ourself.settings, the longer MA, and then we'll add two onto there. And then we'll make sure that we don't have any issues with things shifting or NAs or anything like that. What we'll do then is once we've entered here, we're going to keep things neat and logged. So we're just going to log an empty line just to separate things out a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to log that we've called this function and we're going to say what fun what pair we've called it for and how many rows we're actually going to be calling when we're looking at doing this. Once we've done this, we're all set up to go and we're all set up to get our actual candles from the OANDA API. So we can say that we want our candle data frame or df to be self dot fetch candles function and then we send in the row count as max rows and remember this is crucial the candle time that we're looking for now obviously at the moment this code won't work because we're not returning anything from fetch candles so should we should drop into fetch candles and uh, make the code there so the first thing to do then is go into the api and actually fetch the candles that we need. So we're taking, we're getting the status code, the data frame, and we're using the API to fetch the candles using our pair. We've got our row count and our granularity. And now we're going to do our first little sanity check in here. It could be that this API call has failed. And if it has, then our data frame will be none. We'll log that into our log so that we know that something's gone wrong when we come back and look later on, and we'll return none from this function. So we didn't actually get anything when we we're trying to fetch the candles. Now you may ask yourself the question, well, hang on a minute, shouldn't we then try again? And the answer is yes. And in fact, I've said this many times, I'm going to say it again. You should really make sure you write some code inside all this fetching code with the anticipation that things are going to go wrong. So maybe you'll try five times. If it doesn't work, you'll recreate the API, reconnect and try again. And you have to decide how you want to do it. For the sake of brevity and just this course, we'll just say that if we don't get anything back, then uh, we're we're just going to return none. The next issue we could get is something that I think I've also explained in a previous video and that is although from the timings when we were processing the latest candle in the bot we know what the last completed candle time was. On some occasions very frustratingly the API on your next request won't give you that most recent candle as complete and this of course is a little bit annoying now this is something else you'll want to deal with as well but what we're going to do is we're just going to say if the last candle its time is not equal to the one that we're expecting then there's been a little bit of a problem here and therefore we should just say there's an error we'll log that error we'll log the difference in in times and then we'll also return none from here otherwise if everything has worked then we'll return the data frame now something very very important I got you here that you need to be aware of particularly when you're using a strategy like the moving average cross so the moving average cross is an easy one to implement and demo but is a very bad strategy in some cases because it doesn't have a stop loss or a take profit so if you arrive in the situation here where say you know that we have a new candle you found it in the API but you've gone back into the API to get the data to analyze and it doesn't give you this candle then you've missed that candle now imagine that candle was a cross what should be happening here is you should be closing any trade that you actually have open at the moment but you've missed that candle so you're not going to close the open trade and you're not going to open your new trade on your strategy and now when the bot comes to the following candle you'll not have a cross so the bot will just ignore everything but what it won't do is check backwards and see, hang on a minute, do I have the correct trade direction open for where the moving averages are? So the small above the longer or the, the small one below the longer one. And this, of course, is very dangerous. And this could mean you could have a trade open for a long, long time in completely the wrong direction and have big losses. But we're going to put something in the code later on to mitigate against that with this particular strategy. Now, with strategies like the inside bar where you have a stop loss and take profit and stuff, of course, that doesn't matter so much. But it does matter very much in the case of this uh, moving average cross one here. So it's something to be aware of, something I've made a note of and something that we'll deal with later on once we've got the bot actually putting trades on. So now we have our fetch candles function written. 
we're able to get our data frame off candles. Let's assume everything got back to here. We can drop down into get trade direction and we can ask the question if the data frame that's come back isn't none. So we've actually got to data frame with the correct candle. Then we're going to return the self.process candles and our data frame. Now process candles, we haven't written the code yet. We're about to do it, but um, we're going to return the result of that, which is going to be buy, sell or none. Now, if we did return none from this function here, then this if won't have been successful. Therefore, we can just return none. Our trade decision is not to do anything because something's gone wrong. So we're not going to be making a trade. So the last thing we need to do then inside uh, this file here then is look at this process candles. And you'll be glad to know that this contains code that you've seen before when we've done all of the back testing. I've changed it around slightly just to make it a little bit simpler for the function here. So the first thing we're going to do is reset the index on the data frame. Uh, that shouldn't be necessary, but I've got a habit of doing this all the time because things can go wrong when the indexes aren't correct. We're going to add a column to our candles data frame that says what pair we have. This is just so it's easier to read in the log. And we're also going to add a column with the spread. Now we're not going to be using the spread in any way, but I kind of thought you might want to put the spread on there because I know in my own strategies, for instance, or my own bots, I restrict the trading according to how big the spread is because there's no point in putting a trade on if the spread is absolutely massive, for example. Then we're going to define a couple of column names so that we don't need to copy and paste this code so we can change the names easily later on. One is the short previous. So that's of the previous rows short moving average. And that one long previous is for the previous row in the tables um, moving average, long moving average. And now I want to set up the uh, short moving average column name and the long moving average column name. So it'll be MA underscore and then two and MA underscore eight in this case from our settings, the short and the long moving average. Again, this is stuff you've seen many times in the back testing. And now we want to calculate for the short column and the long column, the actual moving averages on our data frame. Again, code you've seen, data frame mid C rolling and the window is the short MA and the long MA and then the mean. So if you imagine now in our data frame, we've got the moving averages calculated. What we want to do is see if there was a cross. So we need to be able to compare the relationship between the short and the long for the current row or the current candle and also the previous candle. In other words, we want to shift the short and the long down one so that we've got the previous values. Again, stuff you've seen before, so it's good. Um, I don't need to explain it. So we're just going to shift the short and the long columns down so that we've got the previous values. And now what we can do is we can work out what the delta was for the current one, which is the D now I've called it, and what the delta was for the previous one between the short and the long. Then we'll get ourselves a reference to the last row of the data frame and we'll set the decision variable equal to none. So our current trade decision is none. And now we can implement a little bit of the logic that we need. So it's fairly simple stuff. So if the delta of the current row is less than zero, so that means if the short is below the long and the previous row delta is above zero, so that means in the previous candle, the short was above the long, then we must have had a cross down to the negative side. So our decision is to make a sell. And likewise, else if we can say, if we've got the opposite way around, then our decision is to buy. So now we have all the code implemented inside here. The only thing we need to do is return our decision. But before we do that, I just want to log to our log what we've actually done. So I paste in some code here. Again, it's on GitHub, just copy and paste this. But this is just taking the columns that we need from our data frame. And then when we've got those columns, we're going to log to our log that we've processed the data frame and then show the last five rows of the data frame so that we can have some kind of sanity check. In fact, let's just make the last two rows of the data frame there. So we'll do tail two. So we've got some kind of sanity check that when we look back in our log and look at the trades, we can see why the bot uh, actually did what it did. And when we've done that, we'll just put out the decision as well. So what kind of trading decision did we make? A one minus one or a zero. And then we'll log an empty line as well, just to keep things neat. And then finally, last but not least, after all that code, a deep breath, we can return the decision that we've made. So saving all that code, we've got quite a bit written into there. It's all been copy and paste. It's all on GitHub. And it's been written, as I said, it's such that we don't rely on the bot. So you could put yourself in if name equals main and maybe just play around with the functions and make sure things are working before actually putting them inside the bot. I'm probably wrong, but I'm going to assume that things are working in this and now switch back to bot.py. So at the top of bot.py, I'm going to make a copy of the trading bot and I'm going to uh, make a technicals bot log. So we're going to have a 
separate log and I'll call this tech log for the technicals part so we can save the analysis of how it made its trading decisions in a different log to the one where we're just at the moment just looking at the timings and here you can see the advantage already of using this log wrapper we can make lots of separate different logs for different bits of information to understand what the bot is doing okay so where we really need to work then is we need to work inside uh, the process pairs but we need access of course to our technicals so what we're going to do is at the top here is we're going to import our technicals and we're going to also import the none buy and sell from the defs and then finally inside process pairs we'll keep the log that says we know we're ready to trade and now we're going to make something I'll call it uh, text for technicals if I can spell it correctly anyway and here we want to make a new technicals object and then we need to pass to this object we need to pass the settings for the particular pair in question then we can see we need to pass the a reference to the OANDA API we need to pass a reference to the actual pair that we have in our loop we can pass a reference to the granularity and by the way the granularity remember is hard coded at the top of this file of course you probably want that inside your settings or something like this but for us we'll just leave it hard coded at the top of the file and then finally on the end instead of log being none we can now say that, that it's equal to self dot technical log so once we've done that we've got our technicals instance created we can then say right we want a decision and that means we're going to go to our text and we're going to say please get a trade decision and in that trade decision we want to pass in the candle time and you remember that we get the candle time from the timings object for the given pair and then the last underscore candle so you, up here you can see where we update the timings we know that our timings object has this last candle property which has the time of the most recent candle I'll just flick over to the timings class here it is it has this uh, property here so we've created our technicals object set it all up told it to please go and process everything and tell us whether we need to be making a trade now we need if we want to trade to understand how many units that we actually want to trade now you remember inside the settings object we actually have units that tells us how many units and you also remember that the decision we're making if I go back to defs.py if we make a buy it's a one if a sell is a minus one and none is zero well that's sort of deliberately convenient because it means whatever the decision is we can multiply the decision by the number of units in the settings to get how many units we want to trade so we'll have the minus 1000 for a sell the 1000 for a buy and zero because none is zero units if the decision was not to trade and that means we can ask ourselves if units is not equal to zero then we can just log a message to our normal log saying we would trade here so many units and now with all of that completed that should be enough to actually get the bot at least simulating trading without actually putting the trade on but doing all of the analysis so jumping into the console then I'm going to hold my breath and probably with ill-deserved confidence hit enter and allow the bot to set itself up and start running so that seems to be running I'm going to move the console away and just jump back and find our log so we've got the technicals bot log that's good and we've got the trading bot log and you can see that it's showing me the most recent candle and it's got all of the pairs that I've got inside the settings which is good to see as well and I can see on the log here that also we've had a trading decision that we would make a sell so and that should be on the pound US dollar so let's go into the technicals here now I'm going to just close these files off can we then see everything yes that looks a little bit better so let's see uh, what we have here's where we had our trading decision so we had the pound US dollar and you can see the last two rows the 701 the 702 candle and indeed the delta previous was positive and the delta now is negative now let's just check that so we've got 68705 so it was negative and here it was indeed positive so that was the correct decision that was then a sell that appeared there and you can see that we've got a nice log here for all of the technical analysis which is telling us what pair we're analyzing we process the data frame we're able then to see how long the processing takes if you've got complicated processing and we're able to see then exactly the crosses and what the bot was actually up to when it was making its various decisions now these files don't update live as you look at them you need to flick off and then back on again to see the live updates and now you can see we've actually got a lot more information inside the log and in the future you might just want to log here the information when the decision is made to place a trade rather than seeing uh, every single analysis that the bot is actually doing now personally I prefer to log as much as possible um, I like to see everything that the bot is doing because when things go wrong you really really want to know why especially when it comes down to to using real money but that looks quite good 
Uh, our bot seems to be up and running, identifying new candles and uh, making trading decisions. Now one thing I will say in preparation for this video, I did notice that now and again we ended up with a missed candle and in fact you can see here it's interesting that five of the six pairs at 90401 actually identify the new candle but it then took another 10 seconds before the Euro Swiss franc actually discovered there was a new candle. And I did see when I was preparing the code that now and again we completely missed a candle which is why I emphasize the importance inside the technicals that later on with the bot we're going to have to add something in here or add something inside the bot itself that detects when a trade is on which shouldn't be on because of the cross at the moment or the, the relationship of the short and the long moving average is not represented correctly by the trade. But we'll cover that at, uh, in a later video. So we've made really good strides actually. Um, hopefully you're pleased with where you've come. I always find it quite cool when you see it running automatically and analyzing and making these decisions. And now what remains of course is instead of just logging to a file that we would trade this we actually need to place the trades and go down the rabbit hole of trying to manage all of the trades that the bot is making. So I hope you enjoyed that one. It was a little bit longer than usual. Uh, lots of copy and paste, codes on GitHub and thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcome as always.